move ahead here and we're gonna show you another video. A little bit of a change here, and I know this, we have the morning a, a little bit of a longer session, so people are getting antsy, but I think this next piece is gonna actually um, really call attention to what's happening here in Georgia. And so before we start the next segment, I'm gonna actually bring up another video. So we talk about really public, private, government, education, how they play the role within payments and in FinTech in particular. So at WorldPay, I've really been pleased to be able to partner with Georgia Tech and be a sponsor of the FinTech um, incubator really at Georgia Tech with the ATDC. So I wanna just let um, the video play now and we'll see what ATDC is doing. The ATDC is a uh, technology startup incubator out of Georgia Tech and our mission is to grow and scale technology companies uh, broadly in the state of Georgia. We are looking for high potential uh, markets where these entrepreneurs are thinking they have a, a solution. We also look for uh, uh, entrepreneurs that are highly coachable as well. So those are two key ingredients that uh, sort of like shape a successful entrepreneur. Uh, then after that, we, we, we provide those high potential entrepreneurs and companies with the resources they need in order to scale our company. So uh, more recent examples include Ground Floor, which just uh, closed their Series A. Uh, so that's a company that actually reloc uh, relocated from uh, North Carolina to be at the ATDC and be incubated. And we provided all the resources they needed to kind of take it to the next step. For this year, we are partnering for the Innovation Award to uh, help innovative startups with cash and resources and mentoring in order to help accelerate their growth. And we see ourselves as playing a key role to enable these entrepreneurs and fintech companies become the next billion dollar, hundred billion dollar companies and uh, fintech leaders that will in turn help new generations pursue their fintech uh, uh, ideas and uh, address challenges. You got a little taste of what the ATDC does. Um, Michelangelo, who was featured in the video, and uh, the organization are also exhibiting as part of our Innovation Alley amongst some of the portfolio companies that have grown up within that organization. So um, when we finish up this next segment, I definitely encourage you to go and see what they're doing, see the companies that they're working with and how they're helping them grow here in Atlanta and in Georgia. So what we're gonna do next is actually um, bring up Chris Milner, who has been, you know, really instrumental over the past few months in running the innovation program. He'll talk to you about this, and then you're gonna hear from um, three of the finalists. Um, there were a number of other companies that participated in this, and again, you can see them in Innovationality throughout the day, but Chris is gonna to talk to you specifically about what we've done over the past month, and then you're gonna hear from those three companies and have a chance to vote. So keep your phones out. You'll hear from all three before at the end, we'll bring up the polling so that you can actually vote and then continue throughout the day before at the end of the day we um, announce the winner for the $50,000 grant. Chris. Thanks, I'm Chris Miller. I'm the, um, the Atlanta market lead for payments and FinTech in North Highland. And I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the TAG FinTech Innovation Award. We, this is the second year we've done it. And really, there were a few things that we set out to accomplish this year. One of those was really around um, educating the, the entrepreneurs we were working with on our ecosystem, really trying to get them plugged into that, understanding where other Georgia uh, companies are playing in the market. The second thing we wanted to do was really provide some um, mentorship around how they talked about their company, whether that was to partners, investors, potential employees. And the third thing was really a more um, general education around some topics that would be helpful to early stage entrepreneurs, whether that was legal, regulatory, um, or how to raise capital. So we selected eight FinTech startups to participate in the program, all of whom had raised less than $1 million in capital. And you know, some of these companies had an idea, some of them had a product, a few of them even had a little bit of revenue. But these were all pretty early stage companies. And over the month of January, we 
took some time in each of our sessions to have a bit of education, so they heard from lawyers on some of the things you might want to look out for if you're an entrepreneur. We heard about the FinTech ecosystem, again, how the Georgia companies were playing in it, so they could help understand where they can build relationships that might benefit their business. And we also heard from uh, a private equity uh, professional who tried to educate them some on how to go about raising capital. But really, I mean, the most important thing I think that these companies got out of it was the ability to work with these industry veterans who were their mentors, who, who helped them think about their business model, helped them think about how you craft a presentation so that it's crisp. And you're gonna get to see the results of that today because we, after several weeks of working with them, we, it all culminated in a pitch night, last Thursday night, where all eight participants delivered eight-minute presentations to a panel of judges, and those judges selected the three finalists that you're gonna see here today. And so these three finalists are gonna be competing for a $50,000 grant and a place in the ATDC Accelerate program. The great thing about this is that you, the audience, get to select the winner. You're gonna have the opportunity after the pitches and throughout the rest of the afternoon to cast your vote by text message for the company that you feel presented the most innovative and viable business idea. So before we get started, I wanna thank the ATDC at Georgia Tech for helping to sponsor and promote the program as well as WorldPay, who kindly offered to host our events. And finally, all of the symposium sponsors whose logos you've been seeing on this slide here today who really made the award possible. We couldn't have done it without them. But most importantly, I wanna thank the eight companies who participated. They put a lot of time and effort into this, as well as the mentors, speakers, and judges who donated their valuable time in order to help out these emerging companies. So I'm gonna uh, fill you in on who the three finalists are and then we'll get the first one up here. So we've got Afundia, Lilly, R&B, and Split. The first one up will be Afundia. Hi, my name is Eli Sethry, and this is David Reap, and we're co-founders of Afundia. Afundia's data consortium gives small business lenders a better way to assess and price for risk, which translates to more loan approvals and more capital for Main Street American businesses. You've probably heard that small business accounts for 50% of the US economy. What you may not know is that when surveyed, small business owners state the number one problem in their business is getting access to capital. Here's a snapshot of our target customer. This is a small business lender. Uh, they're typically a non-bank lender, and they originate less than $50 million annually. Although small, these companies are hungry to grow. And once a lender reaches a certain size, let's say $25 million originate annually, uh, they require larger amounts of capital to grow. And these larger capital providers are asking the same question. How do you assess and price for risk? Our platform provides these small lenders with the tools they need, giving them the ability to say yes to more applications and driving their top line revenue growth. Our target market has a need to become more sophisticated, and that's a problem that Afundia is uniquely positioned to solve. A typical customer has seen less than 100 defaulted loans in their loan portfolio. And with 100 defaulted loans, that's just a not enough to build anything that's statistically accurate in terms of a pricing model or a risk assessment model. Through our data consortium, we were able to deliver the sophistication that our customers require. Based on our research, there's approximately 15 million business credit applications that are processed annually, resulting in a $750 million market. There are no known competitors in the space, but there are known substitutes. Uh, I, should, I should point out that this is just the first two markets we're going after, alternative finance and small ticket equipment finance. Um, 
The substitutes are either building a rudimentary model on their own data, which isn't very predictive, or relying on a generic score they might buy from a third-party data processor, which is also not very predictive. We can displace these solutions. So let me tell you a little bit about how this works. I'm gonna use our first customer as an example. This is a $100,000 SaaS agreement that we've recently signed. It's a lender located in the Midwest. Uh, they've been in business for a little less than 10 years. They have about 20 employees, and they really wanna grow, which is why they came to us. The process starts with our lender submitting their performance data to us. Once we have their data in-house, we'll go out and append uh, from other third-party data processors, say, an Experian or a LexisNexis. Over time, we add additional subscribers to the consortium, meaning we have an e even deeper pool of data to, to pull from. And then we load that custom algorithm into our Fundia risk calculator. Now our lender is ready to conduct business. Our lender enters the relevant data needed from the business credit application. The application is sent to the Fundia risk calculator. The calculator pulls back the necessary third-party data. The custom score is calculated, and then it's returned back to that lender all in a matter of milliseconds. And the real value of our innovation here is giving these small lenders the ability to correctly price for risk with the same level of sophistication as a large lender. They don't have the ability to do that today. This means for small lenders, more loan approvals and more top line revenue. To give you a little bit of background on me, um, I'm a former executive with Marriott where I helped transform their vacation ownership fractional program from a weeks-based program to a points-based program. Um, I spent three years at Can Capital uh, as the director of product development, and that's where I met Eli Sethry. Eli Sethry was the senior vice president of risk and analytics at Can Capital, and for most of uh, anyone looking to build a list of experts that know how to build risk modeling for small business lending, they certainly would have Eli um, on that list. Last week, the president and CEO of the largest provider of business credit data in the US uh, met with us, and it was, an, it was a great meeting. They have been compiling data for 15 years, and they recognize that our solution is unique, and we're beginning a partnership discussion to accelerate the Afundia Consortium with the inclusion of their data. As you're probably now aware, the Afundia algorithms are built on a pooled data set from all the consortium participants. We like to call this the credit scoring highway. Similar to how multiple auto dealerships tend to locate along the same stretch of highway, we enable small lenders to better compete when they work together. We believe that together, they're better. In addition, our consortium business model has built-in network effects. As each new participant is added into our consortium, our models will continue to improve, making the product even more valuable for those not yet participating. A few company headlines. We've secured our first $100,000 SaaS agreement with the um, lender that Eli mentioned. We have half a dozen strong prospects that we're talking about, talking to, and we've completed the development of our first API, which is being integrated into two of the largest uh, software providers that do underwriting. We've identified a second customer segment our product can serve, and we're in talks with an investment group about deploying our solution. Our pro forma projections show average customer revenue of $7,000 per month over an estimated 48 months, creating a lifetime customer revenue value of 350,000. We anticipate that we'll be 1 million annual revenue run rate by the end of this year. Through Afundia, anyone with capital and a small business customer base can now lend capital and compete with the established lenders, disrupting the lending landscape in the US. You know, before we close, I just want to say that when Eli and I got into this business, our goal was to change the face of small business lending. We wanted to make it possible for anybody with working capital and access to a small business customer base to enter into this business. We wanted to increase the amount of capital coming in and make it possible for others to compete with the big lenders. So we ask you to join us, join a fund and help us change small business lending in America. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, thanks, uh, David and Eli. Next up is Lily R and B. Hello, everyone. My name is Barbara Jones, and I'm the founder and CEO of Lily r and Inc. And I'm here today to talk to you about our newest product, Freem Returns. So how would you like to be able to return the items that you purchased online, in the store, or through your mobile device from anywhere at any time? Guys, how great would it be to be able to walk into your wife's closet and look at all the things that she's purchased now, some of it still has the tag on it. And pick up your mobile phone, and with a few clicks, return those items. <laughs> Ladies, how would you like to not, be, not have to look through your purse for your receipt, only to get into the front of the line and realize you forgot your receipt, and now you have to take store credit? So rather than standing in long lines and looking for your receipts, we should be able to process our returns on the way to our next meeting. And then on the way home, stop by the store, pass up everybody else who's standing in line to return their items, get to the returns desk, throw your items on the counter, and keep it moving. OK, so maybe you don't throw your items on the counter, but drop your items off and get on with the rest of your day. So we also think about the retailers in this scenario. So do you think retailers are happy that we're returning our items? Not at all. But to keep us coming back to their stores and to keep us happy, they'll allow us to return our items. But retailers are worried about something very important, and that's returns fraud. So in order to make returns easier for the consumer, we have to tackle the problem of returns fraud for the retailer. And we've done that through something we're calling a return score. More to come on that. So with free and returns, you will be able to return your items online through your mobile device or through your wearable tech device. Once you return those items, you will not have to stand in lines anymore. You will not need your receipt. And you will be able to process your returns at your convenience. Well, the, the way the app works is we're able to pull back your transactions and your loyalty information. We can pull those transactions from 30 to 60 to 90 days out. And then you can select the items that you would like to return. Once you select your item, you need to select the reason for the return and the method of the return, which is in store or shipping the item back to the retailer. If you decide to return the item to the store, you can use our store locator feature to find the nearest store. Now, once that retailer receives the item, you will have your funds in your bank account or back on your credit card. Now, we also have some things for the retailer as well. The retailer will be able to upsell, offer you incentives or discounts, and the retailer will have access to your returns history. Let's say that you're going to return an item that costs $17.50. That retailer may want to offer you a $20 store credit to have you spend that money back in the store. Then they'll have your data, like your return history. They'll know what items are returned more frequently. They'll also have access to items that are returned due to being defective or for returns issues, manufacturer issues. But more importantly, those retailers would have access to your return score. Now, the return score, you can think of it as something similar to a FICO score. It allows the retailers to decide the type of customers that can return their items through frame returns. So let's say that, um, and also with that return score, retailers would be able to personalize the returns process. So let's say that Joe from WorldPay needs to return his items. And he's missed a return policy deadline by 10, 10 or 20 days. But he has a, a really high return score. That retailer may say, oh, well, it's Joe. We'll let him return his items anyway. So they're able to personalize the returns process through the return score and offer that service to their um, customers. So let's talk about the POS system, which we heard earlier in the presentation. The POS system is a very intimate piece of software for most retailers. They don't let just anyone customize or enhance that POS. But retailers do work with POS integrators, and they allow them to customize, modify, and enhance their POS systems. And that's what we do. Lily R&B Inc. is a, a retail POS company that works with some of the largest retailers in the world. 
We do all kinds of things for these retailers. We help them um, integrate APIs into their POS. Lately, we've been doing a lot of chip card enhancements for EMV. Apple Pay is hot right now, and then Omnicommerce and Omnichannel support. But our specialty is returns management. So with Freem Returns, we will now be able to offer a return software product to these retailers and their customers. So our value for the retailers is to allow them to have easier returns methods that comply completely with their existing returns policies. That way, they will be able to personalize those returns to increase their customer satisfaction and customer retention. But most importantly, they will be able to reduce their losses from fraudulent returns. Now, for their customers, we will allow them to experience returns that are stress-free and hassle-free. No more waiting in long lines. They'll be able to process their returns from anywhere at any time. And once they process those returns, they're able to go about their day as they choose. So we do have some competition in this space, but our competitors are still requiring that their clients email them their receipts or enter manually enter paper receipts. Seriously, no more receipts. We, with our retail integration with the POS directly, we are able to um, work with some of the largest retailers in the world, not only the US, but Canada and Japan, to allow them to process their returns. So by working with these retailers, we know returns. Now, we also have a great team. We're working with a product manager and tech strategist, Chidi Afalazi, who advises us on product development. We also have the senior manager of the World Bank who advises us on tech technology trends. And then we have the director of the incubator that's founded by Paul Judge and Alan Nance also as an advisor. We have two early stage in investors, Mr. Ed Lance, who owns a uh, Java training company that trains uh, Java corporation professionals. And then from the entertainment industry, we have writer and director Jamie Brown. Then finally, yours truly. I'm a Java developer, 16 years, and I was one of the first 50 people in the company that Oracle Retail re acquired and turned into the Oracle Retail Suite. And I was part of the Frame Returns team that won the hackathon just recently for the AT and ATDC and WorldPay first ever hackathon. So our market will initially be our existing clients, which are tier one retailers. We will also market this application to tier two and three retailers as well. Now we see busy tech professionals as our early adopters, and we see a huge opportunity to reduce the more than $15 billion a year in returns fraud. And these are the 2015 numbers. We've also integrated during the hackathon our application with the World Pay APIs, which allows us to share in the authorization processing fees. We integrated our application with the Yodely APIs, which gets us access to their valuable financial data. And this is the same data that Credit Karma and Mint.com use to monetize their applications. We've also integrated our application with NCR Silver and WebRTC. So we have multiple, play, multiple ways to monetize the application. So with your investment today, we will be able to complete the MVP of our product and continue our marketing campaign that we had access to Trevor Leno Keller through our hackathon win. And we've been talking with attorneys about a provisional patent for that return score, um, returns score algorithm and returns policy engine that we're creating. So we believe in the, over the next seven years with all of this potential, we'll be able to uh, be acquired by Google. So thank you for your time and thank you for hearing how we want to free the world from the hassles of return. Thanks, Barbara. Um, next up, we have Split. Hey everyone, my name is Jimmy Patel, co-founder and CEO of Split. 
By show of hands, how many have been at a restaurant, had a great time, but the whole experience is ruined because it took forever to pay your bill and made you feel like this guy here? Well, you aren't alone. During peak hours, it takes wait staff more than 10 minutes to close an open bill. Now, as frustrating this is from a diner's perspective, it's even a bigger problem for the restaurants. Consumers share their grievances with the world and influence the masses. And drop and star ratings on sites like Yelp result in revenue loss up to 10%. So that means for an average full service restaurant in the US today, that's loss of $90,000 annually. And these two issues lead to even a bigger problem that the whole industry is facing today. Consumers are adopting technology at a rapid pace and restaurants simply can't keep up. This is where we come in. Split is a CRM platform with a payment application. Consumers use Split to take control of their time and leave a restaurant as easily as they walked in. They get to view and pay their bill directly from their smartphone. And if they're not dining in, they get to order ahead and the food is ready upon arrival for pickup or takeout. And for restaurants, it's simple. We connect them to those consumers and increase their bottom line. We do it in several ways. One, we decrease that table turn rate from minutes to seconds. <clears throat> so that means that long line on a Friday night just got a lot shorter. Two, we capture consumer sentiments in real time, enabling owners and managers to approach dissatisfied patrons while they're still dining in or shortly after they've left. Since we directly tie into the point of sale system, we're able to pull menu information in real time and publish to every mobile device, giving restaurants access to another, another revenue stream. So here's a quick demo of our app. Let's say you're at lunch, uh, you wanna get, make it back to your 1 p.m. meeting. You, all you have to do is pull out your app, view your bill, make sure everything's accurate, rate your experience, and hit pay. It's that easy. Obviously, if you're with a large group, you have the option of paying for your portion evenly, dollar amount, or by items. In either scenario, you could split your bill in seconds. And this simple interaction of paying through split is generating tremendous amount of information, and we capture it all. We know consumers' likes and dislikes, preferences, dietary requirements, and we couple that with external factors like weather and ratings to create a superior business intelligence platform, and we make all this data actionable. So for example, let's say you're a sports bar owner, and during inclement weather, you know you have low foot traffic. You could quickly create a campaign and inform everyone within two mile radius that, that love beer, hey, happy hours at a discount. And these variables are modulars. In other words, restaurant owners could set multiple campaigns, forget about them, we do all the heavy lifting. When the threshold is met, we deliver the campaign to the right device at the right time, uh, at the right user. So we launched publicly seven months ago here in Atlanta. Since then, we have brought brands like Marlowe's Tavern, Hugo, Hugo's and Industry Tavern, and many others. Every restaurant that has split today saves on average of 10 more minutes per table, resulting in revenue opportunity of over $500 at peak times. And on consumer front, 75% of people that have downloaded our free app, they have uploaded at least one credit card. And 25% of them have become repeat users. So we have formulated a three-pronged approach to acquire these restaurants. We know how to sell Split into restaurants today, and we could hand that sales book to any external company like Sitcor, a leading sales-based commission company. They will help, will leverage their expertise to go to new markets and acquire customers quickly. Second, we have relationship with point-of-sale resellers, and they will act as an extension of our sales force. They have direct line of communications with these restaurants, and they'll be able to convert them into Split customers with low efforts. And third, we have partnered with payment processors. Not only do they give us free payment processing, but they will act as a national distribution channel for us. On the consumer front, the heart of their strategy starts with the brick and mortar, with in-store marketing collateral and way staff. We, they could usually convert those diners into split users with low acquisition costs. And this ties directly into our online and social media strategy to elevate our brand relevance in the markets we're in today. And currently, we're working with large consumer brands uh, for cross-marketing opportunities for increasing our brand equity at a national level. The restaurant industry is massive, and it represents 4% of U.S.'s GDP. And the three key segments that are seeing tremendous growth are mobile payments, mobile ordering, and marketing. In fact, mobile payments are on trajectory to reach over $34 billion by 2019. On the surface, that may appear to be a large number, but it pales in comparison to the annual revenues of $700 billion the industry does today. 
At Split, we're poised to capture market share in all three key segments, and our addressable market is over a billion dollars. We do have competitors in this space. Companies like Tab Out and Level Up focus primarily on payments. Grubhub and E24, they specialize in ordering. And companies like Zios and Illicart require restaurants to deploy a tablet on every table, which is very capital intensive and takes up unnecessary real estate. We enable all three services through software and we don't require any additional hardware. Our revenue model is simple. We charge a small monthly fee per location and we redeem uh, transactional fees for any mobile campaigns redeemed through our platform. We're projected to reach over 19,000 locations with millions of users, over $100 million in revenue. The co-founding team, we come from strong educational background and professional experience from companies like Cisco, CNN, and Citigroup. We have domain expertise in marketing, hospitality, security, design, and development. We've also added five key advisors to our team that know how to scale businesses, have exited multiple times, and are executives at large corporations. In addition, we've worked with well-established companies in the market that will extend our reach globally. And companies like WorldPay will act as a national distribution channel. At Split, we have accomplished a lot with little. And I want to highlight a few milestones here. By the way, we're just getting started. In the coming months, we're going to add a lot more point of sales compatibility to our platform. We're bringing on a lot more locations throughout the Southeast, starting in Atlanta and Nashville. We're going to continue to innovate and disrupt the space until we redefine the dining experience for everyone. If you haven't already, use and download Split today to retain the most valuable asset you all, you all have, your time. Thank you, and vote for Split.